I'm sorry. I was going to go on a tangent. Talk. No, 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 no. I want to hear it. No, don't go on the tangent. This show is about tangents. This is just tangents. This show is not about opening tabs. It's about (laughs) detailed stories in order. Hello, everybody, and welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Kava Taharian. And I'm Hannah Hillam. And today we have a very special guest with us. Uh, He's the creator of such comics as After the Gold Rush, Clovis, and Puck the Artist. He's also the organizer for the March of Science, which I didn't know. March for Science. Yeah, Sorry. that one. I'm not and anymore. I was. I was a founding member, but I've left. Okay. Still. You marched away. Uh, yeah. he, he just kept marching. Didn't ever go back. Yeah. And he's also the host of the Plastic Please Use Our podcast. So please welcome to the show our friend and fellow con man, Miles Greb. Hi, uh, thanks for having thanks for having me, guys. Good to see. You. I normally see you like two or three times a year at random cities around the country. So yeah, yep. Last time was Welcome. Seattle. Yeah, yeah which is my went... home turf. So. Right, that's right. right. We were we yeah. were in your stomping grounds. We went and got uh, what were those noodles? We got really thick noodles. That was really fun. I don't even yeah, the remember big Chinese ones. Like, thick. Yeah, they were awesome. Remember, we had to stand outside the place forever because a million people yes. wanted to eat there, but we, we also in... wanted to eat there. We did. We went inside, and everyone was seemingly yelling. And uh, yeah, at, it's fine. It's I look fine. at Kave and he's like cuddled in the corner of the booth. Like, <laughs> I have this uh, thing where I forget to eat happy. very often at conventions, and then until it's too late, it and happens. then I'm like, I'm a zombie, uh, as opposed to every other moment in my life. That's why I'm I always say present. Chicago Comic Con is good because they just have hot dogs fucking all over. Like you can't escape the hot dogs. Like if you don't yeah. want a hot dog, you're fucked. But if you do, <laughs> man, you're in Chicago, baby. Did you? Or like kind of kind of okay pizza. I was just well, there. Yeah. Were you there? No, I didn't go this year. Uh, no, I, right. I go like every other year. Okay. It was fun. First time. It was really fun. Yeah, it's a good show. Good show. Yeah. Good, good. Well, Miles, thank you for joining us on the show. The first question we always ask everybody is, are you a tab hoarder like us or are you a normal person? Uh, I'm a computer engineer, so okay. uh, I, I don't <laughs> waste all answer. my fucking RAM. <laughs> 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 I currently have like 11 open. So, oh, that's you know. is that a lot for you? Yeah, I, I dabble. You did. D- <laughs> you dabble. You, you microdose. Yeah. 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 You know, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, with friends at a party, you know, yeah. you open some tabs. But well, thank you for, for coming onto the show with us today. Um, as is the ritual, our guest is always the person to go first. And you've been kind enough to prep something for us. So we could just go ahead and yeah. get into it. So, the other day, um, they re-released the Phantom Menace, you know, with the yeah. pod racing. Yeah. So I I went and saw that, which because because I love the pod races because they go, doo, 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 yeah. which is an ex- excellent sound, you know, like yeah. Um, so we were leaving that movie, and my friends were out like, "Wow, we watched that when we were kids, and now it's twenty five years old. Holy shit!" And mm-hmm. we're like, "That Darth Maul fight scene was so good." And my friends like, "It's the best fight scene ever." My other friends like, "I beg to differ." And then we started talking about this movie called Bloodsport. Yeah. Oh my God. Right. What? Right. <laughs> wait. Which, okay, wait. <laughs> That's like one of the movies that he's like, you have to watch it. So I put it on the top of my list. And yeah. guess what? I haven't watched it. So, so, so let's take you back to 1988, which was the year I was born. So it was a very important year in human history. Me too. What yes. month? Uh, February. Oh, January. <laughs> uh-huh. I guess I Close. win 1988. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> You won. That's the greatest battle in the history of the world. Anyway, uh, the highest grossing film that year was uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which was, of course, an excellent movie that that the people today could never fucking make Uh because it's just too good. And that kind of beauty doesn't exist in this world anymore. So that that, that was the highest grossing film. But if we go down on the list about 20 spots, we get to uh, Land Before Time. So that's not it. We're not looking for that. If we go down another 20 more spots... We get to Ernest Saves Christmas. Yeah. All right. Which, which not, not, not the film we're looking for yet. So we have to, we have to go down a little bit more. If we go down a, about twenty more spots, we get to uh, uh, I'm gonna get you, sucker, and then okay. Poltergeist three, and then my stepmother's an alien. But just below that, oh no, just below that is one of the greatest films of all fucking time, and literally the greatest film made with a man who is famous for doing splits. Yes, blood sport. Really? This is this is my favorite tab of all time already. <laughs> yeah, so I'm so excited. Him. <laughs> so if if you watch blood sport, you'll get really good, like top top level pecs, right? You'll get that. Oh, yeah. You'll get you'll get splits. 
That's all that matters. Um, you'll get uh, a kid who speaks like half Dutch, half on. Aryan French style who's wearing a San Francisco oh Giants yes, hat yes. <laughs> and a NFL football giant shirt who, which I watched uh, the movie makes friends with a with a nice old Asian fellow who was going to steal a sword but then he had a little bit of Jiminy Cricket tell him not to do it and so he he get, is trained as a master right and then inevitably as these situations go he ends up fighting in an underground secret uh martial arts tournament called the Kumatai Oh yeah, yeah and, yeah, and there's a song that goes "Kuma die, Kuma die." die. It's really, it's really, really good. It's very, very good. Um, I was not going to steal it? That's my favorite line from the entire. Yeah. Movie. So, so the thing is, you watch this movie, right? And it's like fucking rad, and you're having a great time. And the, and there's like American guy who wears like the fucking like I'm American guy in a big beard, and he's just like, "Oh, I'm over here in Hong Kong, brother," and he's fighting with John Kong my dad. And then the military is like, "You can't go AWOL. You're our most special badass. We love you, man. Fight for America." And he's like, "I will fight for America." But I'm Jean-Claude Vedet and I have to fight in the Kumatai. And they're like, okay. And then there's this part where it's like a Mentos commercial where he runs away and they all fall in the yeah. water. And and okay. you just you it's great. Yeah. Pause. It's Forrest it's Whitaker, by I'm the pause. way, who's also chasing. Yeah, he's him. there. Oh. Yeah. It, it, his he's eyes. He's trying to get him to come fight. Off, yeah. I don't ever want to watch another movie again unless it's no. Miles talking over the movie like he's doing right now. <laughs> that's all I that's all I want. Yeah. So so and then this like okay looking American girl is there for some reason. And you know she's, she's always a, she's a reporter, which is I always yeah, say. Yeah, she's in a reporter. Movies, and if you're a woman, you're always a reporter. That's you're what you're allowed to do with the Th- boys. Then she, then she tries to cancel the fight to protect him, but then she doesn't cancel it. And it's fine, and she's there and she cheers him on. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And uh, then he fights this guy who has the largest pecs uh, in the continent. <laughs> Whoa. And um, oh. yeah, and the guy's actually the guy's actually used to be in some Bruce Lee movies. The actor, but he's he's like fucking like forty three years old, but he looks like the fittest fittest man he's alive. Jacked, yeah. Um, Half and of his body is them. pecs. <laughs> and there's people from all over the world. There, the sumo, there's Brazilian guys. You know, it's very very diverse fight in the darkness of Hong Kong. And then they fight, and the bad guy's like, "Oh, I don't believe in ethics." And so he's like, "Boom, salt in your face." And John Connor Dad's like, "I can't fucking see." But guess what? Because earlier in the movie, because they're excellent screenwriters, they set this up because he can fight without seeing. So fucking not really a big problem after right. all. And then Shidoshi like, trained him that way. And then he gets his ass, and and he wins a fucking day, and he gets the moderately okay looking American girl. And then he goes back to join the military, and then you like, wow, what a movie! But then this thing comes on the screen, and it says, based on the true fucking story, really happened, actual life of Frank what? Dukes. Yeah, it's. And so I was like, well, shit, I gotta crack open some tabs. Oh my god, <laughs> yes, we're gonna. <laughs> and, and we ain't talking about the drink from the eighties. We're no, talking we're about no, like, we're talking about Dukes, con- right? <laughs> control plus T, motherfucker. All right. Right click, add new tab. I'm just going to chime in with the occasional blood sport quote when it's relevant. Yeah, and so I had to, I had to go check out my boy Frank Dukes. Right, so I, I got a little. To say. Yeah, well, you, you say what you want. It's your show. I'm just, I'm just, you know, here. On your no, well, I know. I'm, just I'm living just, in it. I'm loving yeah. this. I'm loving this. But a bum bum bum. Okay. Good. Um, Good plug. I'm Frank Dukes. <laughs> Brought to you by McDonald's. <laughs> and did not sponsor the show. <laughs> McDonald's, you can. You yeah, can. I mean, we'll take your money. I don't care. Or yeah. whatever. Like, yeah, fine. You know? We don't have any like shame or morals anymore. So no. no I mean, first of all, who can afford that? Uh, right. Lockheed shame Martin. Shame and morals. No, not <laughs> we're, 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 we're a bunch of people Lockheed who are Martin. trying to sell comic books and comic strips. Technology from the 1930s. Okay, we're trying to we're trying to sell that. <laughs> so like you know we're we're doing our best. Brought anyway, Halliburton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy in my the basketball team I root for named Halliburton. It was always really strange. That's not Ooh. good. No, he was. He, I don't think he was related to Dick Cheney. Um, well, but yeah. Anyways, <laughs> whose middle name Anyways. is famously Halliburton? <laughs> Dick Halliburton Cheney. Yeah, you fucking know him. <laughs> He's a favorite. What, what is happening? Anyways, <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> 1956. You're, you're on our podcast. That's what's happening. Is that much like I, RFK? You're now going to get worms in your brains yes. as a result yeah. of talking oh, to running us. Running for president straight up admits <laughs> worms hate my brain. I, I want. I, he can't even make worm. jokes about it. I want the worm yeah. to be the president. That's oh. that's what I want. I want to vote for the worm. 
Oh, all right. Now, I mean, that's yeah, a Kennedy that's, I can get behind. That's a Kennedy wow. I can get behind. One See, I don't even know what to say about the situation. It's just like I can't even comment on politics. It's just too fucking, yeah, too fucking out there these days. Anyway, <laughs> before this worm was probably ever born. Uh, <laughs> <in> 19... <laughs> but not before we were... Oh, wait, no, no. no. Yes, right. the, key, the key to good writing is you have to set things and pay them off, right? So, um, of course. And, yeah, in 1956, uh, this motherfucker was born in the northern hellscape of ice known as Toronto, Canada, mm. right? Um, but 10 years later, thankfully, his family went to a proper uh, strong country, America. Uh. Um, <laughs> he, he moved to L.A. And uh, he happened to meet this guy named Shinzo Tanaka, also known as the Tiger, Right, oh. the real he, was a, he was a world famous teacher of forty generations of warriors. Whoa! What? Which is a lot, I don't know how they're using that word generations. If that means like uh, hundreds of years, but it's a lot, a lot of warriors, right? So he's he's yeah. good. That's what you should take away from that. Wow. He was so advanced um, that uh, Tanaka's um, like coming, his birth, and his his prowess was actually foretold by Rasputin himself. What? And he and he fought in the 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 Russian Japanese War, which is an interesting war because uh, Japan kicked Russia's ass and Russia did not expect that. So that's a whole another tab for another episode. But uh, later in World War II, he was so outrageous and didn't care about the rules that even like Imperial World War II Japan kicked him out because like he was not doing it by the book. Right. They don't just he was, do that. Wow. World no, War II, you know, <laughs> World Japan War II, Japan. The World War II was like, you're too, you're too much, much of a rogue. <laughs> Whoa, buddy. <laughs> you know, so, you know, if you know much about World War II, Japan, that might surprise you. But it so they, that's why he got the name the Tiger. I right? didn't get the name the Tiger because he likes stripes. He's, he's a motherfucker. <laughs> so he met him and, and trained with him. Right. Um, there's there's two versions of the story. Uh, I'm not sure which one's true. Who knows which things are true? He claims that he was like watching. So uh, our guy, Frank Dukes, little Frank Dukes, right? Like yeah. 13 right now. He's like looking through windows, watching people do judo at night, but he couldn't go in, you know? And and then the one judo master like saw him and then he like was like, oh, maybe I'll teach you. And then he's like, I've mm-hmm. learned all the techniques through watching through the window. And he's like, wow, you're the fucking, you're amazing. I can't believe you're so good. And so they like t- teach him and like the black fucking tiger dragon arts to teach him that shit. Yeah. That's the one version story. <laughs> Yeah, and the other version is that he tried to steal the sword and then didn't steal the sword, and then he was taught. I'm not sure which one is real. Who knows? But the, both those stories are out there. Anyways, I'll say a both. few years later, when he's 16, 1970, uh, Shinzo takes Duke to Japan to train with the legendary warriors in the land of Musada. So, so he's just this dude just takes this kid to Japan with him? It's fine. Mm. It was the 70s. People, kids were going yeah, with it, adult men all the time. Listen, People he's teaching them kind of martial sciences. So. Never coming back. <laughs> yeah. That's from the movie as well. Hey, kid, oh, see, I don't, I'm just going to nod. Kumite, kumite. <laughs> um, so, so, sometime around these parts, he said that uh, he would have to train with live weapons, right? He's like a so 13, 14 year old kid, and he's fighting with real swords and stuff. Probably pretty cool swords, too, I imagine. I was going to say, oh, this okay. is like my dream at 13, 14. He, he had to <laughs> fight, he had to I'd fight my a, green family. Ber- a green beret, had to take him down. Um, they would, like, tie like sticks to his legs and make it so he couldn't like walk as well and then he'd have to like run from wild animals probably ones with claws i imagine I, oh for sure yeah. like I'd a pig say... or something or a boar <laughs> yeah well boar fuck yeah you know because boar rhymes with gore so that's how you know you're fucked. that's, that's how you true. know also it's killed that's a lot of, they kill a lot of people they yeah. do yeah i watched princess Mononoke. Um, oh yeah <laughs> but then eventually he ends up calling out the entire ninja clan right calls them out says fucking you're on notice and they fight and he wins. Good job. <laughs> and so he becomes a ninja. Well, <laughs> this is literally the story of movie. Batman where he's yeah. fighting Ra's al Ghul. <laughs> <laughs> um, sadly, though, five years later, when they go back to California, uh, Tanaka ends up being found dead. What? And he, he gets buried by the ninja clan in California. You know, one of them that they have there. Where is he? So, I got to find the grave. Uh, yeah, where's his grave? Um, so in, in 19, <laughs> where is he buried in the ground? <laughs> So in 1975, uh, Frank Dukes, our man, the ninja master, the the prodigy, um, yeah. he begins serving in the Marine Corps Reserves, right? Uh-huh. And he obtains the rank of Lance Corporal. Uh, his official records show him having served about 130 days of active duty uh, in the role of a wire man. So a few years later, in 1978, he fulfills uh, Tanaka's dying wish to go fight in the Kumitai. 
Oh. Right? So the Kumitai is this underground secretive martial arts tournament that the movie Bloodsport is based on, right? This is like the inspiration for like Mortal Kombat, uh, Mortal Kombat Street Fighter, yeah. uh, even like UFC. Like a lot of people grew up watching this Bloodsport movie, which detailed the real, absolutely, seriously true events of uh, Bloodsport and the Kumitai. 100% fact. This is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have to keep my hands right here because all I want to do is uh, search every single name you're saying right now. Well, hold up, don't. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest. I that. know. That's why I'm. That's why I'm. Go on. That's good. Be good. Be a good Christian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Aww. so, so this particular Kumitai was held in the Bahamas, right? So Frank Dutz competed, and in this tournament, um, you'd have like you'd have to do twenty fights a day. And they were one knockout fights, and three fights would be going on at the same time. So very serious, extremely oh secretive God. fights. Now, it's like Dukes, a festival. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Coachella. So Dukes <laughs> achieved an incredible record of fifty six KOs in, in this tournament, and wow. he had the fastest ever knockout in zero uh, point twelve seconds. Also, having the fastest kick of all time, what? and he he was the first. And he ends up winning the event. He wins the Kumitai, and he's the first ever Westerner to do so. And he continues to do this several years in a row, totaling a record of 329 to zero. Ooh. So he he's never like lost. The, no, he's the fucking Joe Montana of white guys <laughs> kicking. Like, okay. he's, he's incredible. Yeah, and he, he's said, I discovered my own method, my own way, my own style. Nobody has ever seen it before, and nobody understood it. So he, he's fucking a prodigy and a genius. So later on in 1980, he also uh, writes um, some documents for some magazines uh, calling himself the chameleon due to his ability to, um, to like master disguises, right? And you what? can see all these photos of him that he has. He's, he's really good at it. For example, things that he thought of that people like us would never think of wearing a mustache. Oh, yeah. genius. <laughs> um, glasses. Dark glasses. <laughs> um, a big fake nose with a mustache. Hair, hair different. Oh, die. Now the, die now the, now the, he also did this maneuver. Puff out oh. your cheeks. Puff. Makes your face look different. So so these are strategies he thought of. Hold on. Does it explain why he's the master of disguise? Like yeah, he's what's just, going on? It's not why important. is he disguising himself? It's okay. not important. It absolutely is. Okay. It's right. just like an extra bit of color to his life where he's like, so by he the way, I'm also the best at disguises. So he also wrote for uh, Black Belt Magazine, which I'm sure was fucking rocking in the 80s. Mm -hmm. you oh, Black yeah. Belt Magazine, you're a fucking cool guy. Um, so he wrote several articles giving advice on knife fighting. Amazing. Yeah. I want to read these articles. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. And talking about all the different fighting techniques he learned when he was in Southeast Asia. He, he often says Southeast Asia instead of listing a specific country. Which is cool because, you know, he's like a no borders kind of guy, right? Sure. Um, yeah. 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 He also mentioned that he had several black belts in schools that he couldn't mention, including Taekwondo, mm, which is a fake, normal one. But okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's not fake at all. Okay. And so, and then in 1981, after all this, he leaves the Marine Corps Reserves. He's and still then, in the Marines. Okay. All right. He, during all that, he was in the Marines. <laughs> Yeah, and so then several years later, in 1988, uh, Bloodsport is made, right? So John Clon Van Dan and all the studios come in, they buy the script from him, they, they check out his life, check out his stories, and they're like, it's legit, real. They make Bloodsport. Again, it's not one of the highest grossing movies of the year, but it becomes a cult classic because they got a song that goes, Kumatai, Kumatai, and, and there's good kicks, and people throw salt at each other, and men got giant pecs. Big old. Just, just fucking, what the hell? And you know John Connor does bricks too. Don't forget too. That's the other. Oh awesome yeah, that's part actually a really funny scene when the one the American guy who's like, I'm the I'm the American guy with the American guy, and he's like tries to do the brick break right, the dim mock, the fucking fist move, and like you know, so John Connor dad he like hits the thing and hits the brick down here right. He's like, oh, I can send my shock wave through the bricks. American guy tries to do it and the brick doesn't break, so he picks it up. And he's like, look, not a scratch on it, which is a you know they do a great joke in the movie, really good. You should watch it. He had to be so there. No, it, oh, if you I, saw I'll it, watch it, if you I'll saw it, you'd be it. like, "That was a great joke." Miles brought up. I didn't get it, and that was on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is on me. I'll watch it later. I and do I'll that laugh. all the time. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, Think, I, things I, go over my head every single episode. Yeah. I do this so every after, episode. I'll reference some movie that Hannah's never even heard bad. of. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. After Bloodsport came out, we learned some extra interesting things about Frank Dukes' life. Um, sometime in the eighties, he was also awarded several medals for his military service. Including nice. the Silver and Bronze Star and the Purple Heart. Oh. Also the Medal of Honor. What um, and, and his Medal of Honor, he was given in secret, which is the first time this has ever happened. Of course. <laughs> and 
Um, it was for performing covert operations in Laos, which Uh-oh. is a country that we were in yeah. engaged yeah. in illegally in the late 60s, early 70s during the Vietnam War. We did some pretty yep. horrible things there. Yeah. Did some crimes. Yeah. And so he he performed those missions in Laos and then escaped and had some shrap metal pulled out of his back. So he was awarded the Purple Heart for that. <laughs> um, also, he found uh, he tracked down a serial killer. Who? In, in like oh. 1982. Um, and this serial killer was Richard actually recruited. He was <laughs> recruited. <laughs> you, may, you may not have heard of this guy. He was recruited um, by restaurants, local restaurants, to track down and kill street kids who were hanging outside of restaurants, making them look trashy. I That's right? so I've Reagan never... era. I love it. Yeah, I yeah it. very, very Reagan. <laughs> 100%. But, um, and so Frank Dukes, was, he was not into this. So he tracked the guy down and took him out. Whoa. So, yeah. He also, in 1982, destroyed a Russian bioweapon that was going to target people based on race. So Frank Dukes, friend of the poor, uh, anti-racist. <laughs> did, did some war crimes in Laos. Potential war criminal. That, yeah, exactly. You, you, you know, like, people are complicated. And, you know, yeah. like, like, yeah, as we explore values on the left and become more progressive, it's important that we understand that people are complicated. Sometimes yeah. you will find war crimes in Laos on the record and yes. your immediate reaction might be discussed. But hey. <laughs> no, he, he also probably released like an hour long YouTube apology video that was also never seen by the public. But he's crying. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK. Do, are these don't do war crimes in Laos specifically. Yeah. Be yeah nice no. to that area. Yeah. Be nice to our Laotian friends. Yeah. 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 Okay, anyways, these are, just listen, this is real. <laughs> I don't know if it is. I don't, is it really? Did he do these things? So in 1993. Clearly, he also didn't he sleep for 30 years. <laughs> and in 1993, he ended up a- attending the second annual DACA martial arts trade show. Um, there, a kickboxer, who that he had hired to like work some of his schools and stuff, because he actually had like karate dojos that he was running in the valley. This guy hadn't been paid by him, apparently, and so the kickboxer... Uh, targeted him and and beat him up pretty badly. Uh, several UFC fighters were there who also engaged in the fight with Dukes. Um, Dukes, however, claims that the kickboxer sucker punched him with brass knuckles, and that's the only reason why he won. Naturally. Um, this, this event was recorded um, by several different uh, uh, news people. However, all this information is lost to us, lost to history, lost media. Um, just like the Kumites themselves, which uh, were recorded by 16 different cameras uh, using the high-speed technology at the time, so they could like track the kick speeds and everything, which is how, how Frank Dukes got his uh, fastest kick guy right. record. Um, but but all this tape is is lost to, to history. Um, <laughs> later in 1993, he went over to France and performed in a large arena, smashing bottles and breaking bulletproof glass <laughs> and bricks and stuff in a cool gi. And I the French go to that. Yeah, the French loved it, and it oh, was great. And they yeah. probably ate some nice food after with cream. Oh, probably. Um, <laughs> in 1996, he claims that he was offered um, $25,000 to assassinate Stephen de Seagal, but he declined, however, because oh. he doesn't do that kind of thing anymore. That's the first real disappointment, other than the war crimes, <laughs> I, have to th- yeah. I have to say. Other than yeah. the, next to the <laughs> war crimes. Yeah. Next to the, the war crimes are definitely the worst, but yeah. right below that. Um, Could have taken so, out Seagal, and he didn't. So he starts doing a media circuit in 1996, going on like talk shows and and like late night and like Ricky Lake type shows. You remember <laughs> Ricky Lake? Of course. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so he publishes The Secret Man, which details exploits in his life that we didn't know and didn't appear on my timeline sure. yet, including meeting with the CIA director William J. Casey, who recruited him in a urinal. Hey. <laughs> You know, you can imagine you can imagine how that happened. It, it doesn't have to be penis related, but you right. know, Usually we can is. all we can all hope He's that just it is. Like, hey, you're packing. <laughs> Do you want to be part of this top secret? Yeah. Yeah. And so he was sent on a covert mission to Nicaragua, and he destroyed a chemical oh. weapons plant in Iraq. So, did they base the game Contra on his exploits in Nicaragua? Is that sort Look, of what it is too? A lot of things are based on uh, Fred Dukes, not hmm. like, Frank yeah. Dukes. Fred, whoever, Fred. whoever this guy is, <laughs> oh, we can't be sure. His name's not even Dukes. We don't know who he actually is. So the thing about this guy, he starts getting at this point kind of cornered and asked about evidence for these things, right? Because uh-huh. yeah, as, yeah. So people said that there's a picture. There's a picture of him with his medals. For example, he's wearing medals from like ones from the army and ones from the Marines. 
right? And then also, like, there has never, at this point in history, known to us, been a secret Medal of Honor winner. Yeah. Right? But I guess if it is secret, you can't know. So that's the conspiracy theorist's <laughs> the whole point. ultimate tactic, right? Um, so he says, okay, yeah, the medals were off. The, cause that's because I was wearing a funny Halloween costume in that picture everybody's talking about. Because I thought it'd be funny to have the different medals on. You know, like a joke, inside joke. So obviously that covers, that clears Between that up. Between him and the CIA, yeah. Um, people people continue to ask, well, then no one else has ever spoken about these Kumitai events. Uh, we're trying to get information on these. Obviously a lot of people competed in them. He's like, oh, I have a sword that I got for winning it. Very special sword. They're like, awesome. Cool. Show us the sword. He says, well, I, I can't, can't show you a sword. <laughs> Naturally. And, he, and they're like, okay, why? What happened? I'm going to read what he wrote because I don't want to change any of the words. Oh, beautiful. I can't show you the sword right now because I sold my sword. I have no regrets for it. It went for a good cause. It went to buy kids out of slavery <laughs> who were Dude. on a pirate ship. <laughs> what good they guy. do is these local chiefs, if you were on like Medeo and some stuff, like these kids, they're orphans. And they put them on these ships and they go out in the South China Sea. These ships were crowded and uncomfortable. I'm talking what we call like a normal bunk. They have half of that. They have four or five kids squeezed into these things. They live out there in the open elements and they die. And that Filipino government, they turn a blind eye to it. So I took up arms and I fought the boat pirates and I got these kids free. Many of them are now in the United States. I'm in touch with some of them and they love me to death. And I'll tell you, I've got one kid who's about 15 years old. All I have to do is look cross-eyed at some guy, and he'd kill for me. Oh. Is that word for word? Yeah. Okay, so this guy's a giant liar, right? Yeah, badass. Uh, Hold on. He's a Can, giant let's badass. Let's back up here. Why does he yeah. need to look cross-eyed in yeah, order to going... indicate, instead of just like looking with his eyes to somebody like, well, hey, you're, you're gonna You're going to feel uh, embarrassed now because he's blind <laughs> okay. now, actually. He's oh. blind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's blind. He had brain tumors in his head. They had to take him uh, out. Is he so actually blind or is this another yeah. Like, yeah. Well, thing that I, he's just you know, making up? He apparently had brain tumors in his head that were taken out in the late 90s. And uh, he's blind, I think. But he can well, fight blind, so it's not really a problem. Right. Really he can still do that, really right? It. That was the whole plot point of, of literally, uh, literally of Daredevil. Sport. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> he's Daredevil and Batman mixed together. Also, in the 80s, uh, a newspaper went and tried to talk to him about the large trophy he got for winning some of the Komatai stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And apparently, um, the local trophy company says that they made the trophy. Oh. And, well, that's um, yeah, so, but no, listen, so, that's, so, him, so some, that's him supporting his local creators, okay? He was like, good, yeah. you can give me the solid gold trophy in the Bahamas, but I insist that it's going to be yeah. made by somebody in the Valley so I can bring that money back. because he's, he's an American, you know? Exactly. Sports, American yeah. made. So yeah. I'm a little confused here because some of the things I'm reading you seem to contradict the things I told you before. So I don't, uh -huh. I don't know. So like I have this, I have this part in my notes yep. that says that um, they did some freedom of information acts in his military career, and it says he was never deployed overseas. There it is. Yeah, there that he just is. he worked in America and was never injured, never went to war. He did fall off a truck. He, that oh. happened. He fell off a truck. Hero. Um, yeah, and he had a psychological evaluation <laughs> that said he was prone to, I, I don't understand this, but says flights of fancy. I don't. Mm, yeah. Mm. Who among us, you know? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, this some weird contradicting information here. And and apparently, like, you know, he would have been like nine years old during the, the war in Vietnam. So <laughs> it does seem unlikely that he fought there. But hey, he said he did. small. He could have just snuck in and the people wouldn't see him as easily. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, Agent Orange or small children. What, what, yeah. what's, what plan are we going to go with? What saves money? <laughs> so, yeah, he, th this guy, Mr. Dukes, Mr. Oh. Bloodsport, he, he lived an interesting life, um, a true life, a, a life of all <laughs> these things. Uh, the story kind of ends up with him um, trying to make another movie with John Clon Fat Dan, and then he was like, dating his sister-in-law and then like they sue each other over rights for the movie and then they don't be they're not friends no more friendship ended with with john clown van damme which is very sad well yeah, um, yeah. they make several blood sports sequels that have nothing to do with him and i've never seen no one's ever no. seen no yeah i would never watch the sequels no mm -hmm. yeah because they probably don't have the cool song Definitely in it, not. you know which is important to me it's and so yeah the, 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 this is the the i mean some people call him like you know like 
the greatest liar in martial arts, the fake martial arts champion. Who knows? You know, maybe it's real. Just like Bigfoot, it's real. You know. It's, yep. He's you know, I'm real things. I'm gonna yeah. choose to believe that yeah. it's real. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely not. And no, uh, no, no. it'd be really, really, <laughs> no, really no, no, silly no, no. to go on yeah. a podcast and say you believe it. That'd be pretty embarrassing. About halfway through that story, I was like, hmm, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But you did yeah, a great, so, dude. Oh, thanks. Took me, took me on our trip right there. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, basically, he's still alive. And I was he, say, he's uh, still alive. In fact, there was a really big, uh, like, lineage breakup of a big dojo in california recently where like one master is retiring another guy's going thin the thing and they're trying to figure out who's the proper successor and he like pops in on facebook and says like i'm fucking frank dukes i'm I the highest it. ranking on white facebook. kicking man of all fucking time kicking i'm gonna man. settle who should be in charge of doing flips and shit uh, and everyone's like bro you're, that's none of this shit's real they're like who are you <laughs> well, so you well they know see. who he is because he won't shut up about himself right? sure. everybody knows he is he's the he's the true man behind blood sport brother you know like i mean it's true see if he just never gives in and never says he's lying hey yeah great that's the donald trump him. method that's just right keep there. stacking that's, him that's just keep media stacking these him days. baby never yeah. back down Never back down. Yeah, that is K. So did they, did they resolve that? Did they figure out who the master was going to be that took over that dojo? I don't give a shit. We don't know. <laughs> I, only, I, only I, just, I didn't know if his weighing in actually like affected it one way or another. I don't know. I only care about Frank Dukes. So that's, that's our guy. That's our guy. You know, very interesting person. Uh, a true American. Um, In every sense. The, yeah, you know, American. yeah. The thing is, he's probably actually moderately decent at martial arts. You know, could just been oh. like ran a dojo. Like he like could kick. I was gonna say, is he actually good at martial arts? Um, I I am not a martial arts expert. I've seen all the Karate Kid movies, and I've seen all the new series of Karate <laughs> You're Kid. You're an expert. And so, yeah, so I feel qualified to say, you know, he's like a a, a five out of ten. Yeah, That's pretty good. He, like like the guy like right now, I don't think he's good because he's like old. Blind. Old blind. And right, right. <laughs> Which again, maybe is actually not a problem because you can fight blind. Age um, is advantage. Some kind of is. You know, there's a lot of ists these days. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but yeah, he was probably pretty good. He's pretty good. You know, like like he could he could afford like a condo uh, with oh. his schools from his kicking ability. Like it's more condo, than I can afford. A, a car, occasional trips to Quiznos or whatever was around in his day. Quiznos. And he could have right, right. gone Quiznos. to such places. There's actually a Quiznos like where I live. Isn't that fucking amazing? Like, what's with Seattle and having Fred Meyer and Quiznos and like things that went on a business <laughs> 25 years ago in the, the dream rest of, of the, the 90s? States. You know, it's, it's alive. It's alive in uh, Seattle. It's not Portland yeah. anymore. Seattle, yeah, well, yeah. Portland's always copying our shit. They're just fucking down. Oh, I know. You know. They're like, we need, we need to be. Anyway, yeah, no, I was like up there and I'm like, why are these stores I haven't seen in 20 years still around? Yeah. We're living yeah. in the past, baby. Fred Meyer's great. I went there. It's yeah. solid. I, I get the boars. <laughs> I don't even know what Fred Meyer's cheese is. Cheese and meat sandwiches. Yeah. For like seven dollars. It's not um, bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Safeway, pretty they're good. way more than that. What no. what is Fred Meyer? Is it a sandwich place? It's like a it's like a it's grocery store. It's fancy Walmart. It's, it's like fancy what if, Walmart. Yes. What if you went to Walmart but there was no pajama bottoms? <laughs> where where is this? Where Except was it in originally? The, in is Washington like in Utah there's always something? pajama bottoms. It's the great northwest. Yeah. I saw it in okay. Utah. We had it in Utah. I remember I somebody like got their engagement ring from there. They had like a jeweler counter that people like would actually yeah. go go yeah. to. <laughs> Fred Meyer, fancy Walmart. Who is so that, Fred that's, Meyer? That's that's my story. I hope it's an appropriate story for your show. Absolutely, hundred uh, percent. Yes, I only, yes. I've, I've only listened I, to listen, three episodes of your this. show, but I tried to get it good. <laughs> we're not uh, just saying this. We ha- I have mentioned Bloodsport multiple times throughout this. Like this is like the, the fourth series. mention of Bloodsport. <laughs> it's great. It's really <laughs> like, great. He talks it's, about it all the time, off so camera good. too. The Dude thing with Bloodsport Blood is, it's it's a terrible script, but it hits every single beat that it needs I, to. That's for, why it's funny to to be like a proper like Hollywood success. So it works. It's functionally a very good movie. It's just like terrible. That's what makes it so fun. Yeah, because you're sitting here like, why am I watching this shit? You're like, man, I hope that guy beats that guy. Fuck, gotta right. get him. That's what I'm you saying. It, <laughs> it's like, oh, functionally shit. very good. It like it hits like, all the Argh! things that you're supposed to have for Argh! screenwriting. Yeah, that's why it's and so bad, fascinating. And the bad guy's pecs are so monstrous. You're like, They're we have massive. to take him down. There's Pretty some kind fun. of some kind of thing going on there. Can't can't let that go around. Also, I love that you mentioned the giant's hat and the jersey, which I always say would be the best uh, Halloween costume of all time. Is if you wore that, <laughs> and if someone recognized you in a crowd and knew what it was from, I'd be like, you're my best friend forever now. 
Uh, yeah, and it's, it's also uh, I think the first movie that makes Jean Claude Van Damme like a, a star, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like that's the first film. Yeah, probably. I mean, the man does the splits, a montage where he just does the splits. Mm-hmm. It's the whole fucking montage. They yeah. also like have him in some weird S and M rope type situation where they make mm-hmm. him do the splits. I zoned out and came right back in at that. Yeah, I mean, okay. he's a good look. He's a good looking guy. Nice. I don't know if he'd be very attentive like in a relationship, but you know, for Who a night that? or two, for a night or two, you know. He, you know, he can do some stuff. He can get an, an, uh, enough, yeah. Enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fred Meyer, by the way, was a real dude. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was listening. <laughs> I'm like Fred, um, like Fred Extra tab. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fred Meyer was a dope guy. He had tons of money, and then he gave all of it away. Shit, I don't have none of that. Me neither. Did he give it and away to did, kids who were like on pirate ships that he saved? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. didn't give away a sword that he... Wa- he okay, my man... <laughs> He's not that good of a guy. <laughs> right? Was trained by a guy prophesized by Rasputin. Uh huh. Right. He, uh, so was Fred Meyer. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So was, okay. Who we was? can't prove that Fred Meyer didn't also <laughs> yeah. compete in the Kumite. He was there. Okay. Okay. Well, fine. You got me then. I give up. <laughs> Look, this is a podcast. Everything yeah. we say is true. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Miles, you look so <laughs> defeated. <laughs> no. my, my podcast, by the way. The Plastic Pleasosaur podcast is about uh, debunking myths or exploring myths and mysteries in history and archaeology, and we talk about the true stories behind cryptids. Oh. You should go listen to it, everybody. Yeah. That's really awesome, because that is almost exactly what my tab is about today. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. smooth it's... transition. Thank you. Uh, it's not about cryptids, but it's about debunking um, a myth. Yeah, so my tab is on what is something that is known as the Fata Morgana. Have you heard of... Yeah, Miles knows what Fata Morgana is, I have no is, idea. Right? Is this from, like, Dune 2 or something? Sounds like it. No. I thought I can talk about Dune 2. Oh. <laughs> Should we do a Dune podcast now? You know, I wrote a Dune comic book. Sorry, what? Yeah, Dune to Train the Faithful. You should Google it. It's very well oh. received by Whoa. everyone but Brian Herbert. He did not like it. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares what Brian, that guy thinks? Brian Herbert sucks. So oh, I'm saying bummer. It. It's fine. <laughs> Frank well, Herbert no. good. But. Frank Herbert good, Brian bad. Fred good. Okay. Yeah, so it, um, it, I'm sorry. I was going to go on a tangent. Talk. Don't, no, don't no, no, no. I want to hear no, it. Don't go listen on to the me. tangent. This show is no, not tangent. This, is just this show's tangents. not about opening tabs. It's about detailed stories in order. Miles, no, it is about your opening tabs. Now we insist. We I won't, so I won't do it. I have principles. I'm like Frank Dukes. I stand by what's right in the fight. Yep. All right. You're the Frank Dukes of podcasting. Uh, all right. Fata, <laughs> Fata Morgana. All Exclusively right? recording in splits <laughs> for hours at a time. He's in splits right now. Yeah. You guys you can't, can't see, see it. I guess you can, but yeah. Leo Organa. What did you say? Yeah. Leo Organa. Uh, no. <laughs> Please don't Star Wars talk. Oh, you don't like Star Wars? Uh, I have a rule. I don't talk about Star Wars on podcasts. You just okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So you know, just respect my boundaries. That's all I ask. Yeah, I apologize for yeah. uh, not respecting your boundaries. Um, yeah. Fata Finally. Morgana. Finally. Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana is a type of mirage that you see on the ocean. Uh, and okay, I got. I started reading this article called "Fantastically Wrong: The Bizarre Mirages That Once Scared the Bejesus Out of Sailors," and it was written by Matt Simon in 2015 for Wired magazine. So. It mm. is behind a paywall. I didn't realize that because we do have a Wired subscription. But if you could, you can have one free article a month. Go read this one. Someone's rich with their Wired subscription. <laughs> Getting down oh, yeah? from our ivory tower. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. You're going to trust someone that both reads articles and to yeah. pays for them? And like, pays what's for up? them? What pays to keep journalism alive? Yeah, no, I'm the I'm the bad one. Okay, I'm so I have derailed. a journalism award, you know. You, what? I ran the school paper in college and high school. And I have oh. a shirt from it, but I can't wear the shirt anymore on account of peanut butter oh. cups and time. Oh, no. Are we flexing high school awards? Because I got a journalism award in high school, too. Oh, my gosh. I got a There's Shakespeare award. Yeah. Oh, holy shit. Coolest per- kids in the school. Uh, I, perform Shakes- <laughs> I perform Shakespeare second best in the state. So <laughs> Hell yeah. that. Whoa. Wow. Look at us. Nerds. Yeah. Okay. We're, so, we're so proud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fata Morgana. Okay, so the article, <laughs> the article begins with an Italian Jesuit priest named oh, Father. Oh fuck! De- oh yeah, don't worry. Remember the Jesuits aren't the creepy ones, <laughs> oh, right? Oh fuck! Oh, they're all creepy to me. 
Well, for sure, but these ones are the least creepy, mm. in my opinion. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll pass judgment on the priest after we hear what he has to say. <laughs> Afterwards, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let him speak. <laughs> Let this dude speak. He, uh, his name's Fawner. Fawner? Fawner? A mess right now. Fawner. Fa- Father Domenico. He's fawning over everything. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Father, <laughs> Father Domenico Giardina. And he's from Italy, and it was in 1643, and he's like chilling, doing whatever like Jesuit priests do, which let's not, actually, let's not even, I wish I could take that back, uh, and glances at the horizon, <laughs> glances at the horizon of the ocean, and he sees what looks like a city floating above the sea. Yeah, and it's because of what it was. Yeah. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. Yeah. Story. The ocean. Tab is he over. So my tab. Like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to talk about? You guys are the worst. <laughs> I, so here's what he says. Let me get through this. He says, he freaked out and said, I see a city all floating in the air and so measureless and so splendid, so adorned with magnificent buildings, all of which was found on a base of luminous crystal, which sounds pretty dope. And then he goes on to describe that it turns quickly into a garden and then quickly into a forest and then quickly into an army rushing out. And then it goes away completely. He was like, what the hell was that? It's not the first time or the last time somebody would see this floating city because this is what they call the Fata Morgana. And it's something when you look at the horizon of the ocean and there's some an object on the horizon, there's a mirage that happens that reverses it and makes it look taller than it actually is to the point where you can't even see. Here, I'm going to send you a picture. It's really hard to explain, turns out. And they end up looking like floating ships. Whoa. Speaking of Star Wars, it literally does just look like a floating a ship. A flying ship. A yeah. Lando system. It looks like uh, like a flying ship above the ocean. So... <laughs> Yeah, they, uh, they can, they can, they can, they can repeat. <laughs> they can repeat. And and other examples of the Fata Morgana have been showing up all over the place. Like, have you ever heard of the the tale of the Flying Dutchman? That boat? Yeah, that, yeah of course. That was it's a f- Pirates of Caribbean movie. Yeah. Well, so these sailors have been reporting seeing this Flying Dutchman boat for like hundreds of years. Mm. This ghostly apparition on the horizon. And people are like, yeah, that's definitely just a mirage. Uh, but it freaked everybody out. And it was like a port, like a sign of bad luck. And... um. Fata Morgana is Italian for Morgan the Fae, which is like an Arthurian fairy legend. Have you heard of her? She's the main bad guy from the Arthurian legend. Yes. Uh, And she originally started out as like um, just like a kind of amorphous fairy type creature. And then they put her in the Arthurian legends as Arthur's uh, sister, half sister, who like wants to kill him. Uh, Yeah, because you got got the French versions and the Welsh versions. Yes, exactly. The Welsh versions do not have Morgan... The fa- no. Morgan Le Fay in them, and they don't have Lancelot either, and they're better. No, the French so, add more sex. They add way more sex, and the Welsh yeah. add just a lot of death. Yeah, well, a you lot know, of, that's how. Well, I mean, God, look at it. That's the way she goes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of death. Anyway, so they they're called the uh, Fata Morgana because they look like castles in the sky that she would live in, yeah. or like a like an underwater lair that has like a she. They say that she trapped her lover under there, and he's so bored from being immortal that he just like puts on these shows on the horizon when really it's just a boat or or an island it can be an island too <laughs> but everyone's like it's it's morgan and these was like thousands of years like there's a report from like a second century from some greek guy who was like there's a, definitely a city in the sky and everyone's like definitely but later they're like oh actually maybe there's some science behind this let's kind of like not blame it on you know superstition and magic good job greeks yeah they did. They did a go. lot of that. Like they, they knew it wasn't like magic. Yeah. Good job. Hey, I know you hate the Greeks, but listen, they did okay. <laughs> I don't hate the Greeks. <laughs> wow. We talked about it the other day. Okay, never mind. <laughs> We're talking about ancient Greece stealing everything from ancient Persia. We, let's clarify so that don't, people don't think I'm just like this. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> racist against Greek people. <laughs> well, I heard it. You know. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes, this is not, this is I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing good. Okay. I'm gonna explain what a Fata Morgana is and how it works, okay? All right. I for, okay. I want you to know that I believe in you. I mean you got you got like second place at saying Shakespeare good in high school and so you're ready for this. Thank you. Fata Morgana. So here's how it works. So instead of it actually being a floating boat or whatever, um mm-hmm. it all has to do with like the way uh heat rises. So a, a traditional mirage is when you're like in the desert and mm-hmm. they, it's hottest closest to the like the ground and it gets cooler, yeah. which turns it into like this mirroring effect. Yeah, this is tradi- the opposite. Traditionally, you're in the desert and you see the oasis 
mm-hmm. then your tongue goes out and your eyes go big. Yep. And you do the thing <laughs> with your legs, and then you run to the water, and then it's not there. That's traditionally what happens Traditional. with a mirage. That's scientifically yeah. backed. Yeah. What happens with a mirage? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm derailing your show with no, my jokes. I apologize. I, no, that's what we do. I'm just letting you derail for once because I'm usually the one to derail. I'm, I'm allowing the guests to do the derailing. It's Don't interesting because, like, I think I'm not. You know, it's like, oh, I, I got to derail Miles now. Good luck. Yeah. I know. I've tried. It doesn't work. Um, okay, so I, I, I trained my mind as Frank Dukes did by learning his story. <laughs> so I am fucking ready to go. All right. So there's an inversion layer in the atmosphere. I'm going to get Ooh. through this angrily. So the hot sun heats the atmosphere, but the layer of cold air near the water stays cold. So it's all hot, 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 and then cold, and then water, right? Mm-hmm. And if there's okay. a boat, I'm going to kill you, Wiles. If there's a boat on, <laughs> <laughs> if there's a boat on the horizon, we won't see it because. Cold air is dense, and light does not travel fast through cold air. It travels fast through through thinner air, which is hot air. Not yes. thinner. Okay, I'm following. Yeah, yeah. Lower L- density L- air. Less dense material, yep. Less yeah. dense material. So while we're looking, our eye line is getting bent upward into the, cold, the, the hotter air layers. And so we start seeing the thing on the horizon pushed up onto these hot layers. And it stays like that as long as that as long as those layers are still intact, which is why it changes so quickly because it'll start getting all weird and wacky and like turn into a city and then turn into like a church and then turn into a boat again. And then it'll just dissipate because all the winds are mixing all the air together. Uh. And uh, that's a Fata Morgana. And I have to say this like I'm angry or else I won't get through it. I feel like Um, this anger is directed at me personally. It's not. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just sitting here like, I'm sorry. No, no, it's not you at all. It's like if I if, here's what here's what it is. I, if I feel like clouded and messed up, yeah. I have to get through it with rage, or else I yeah. won't. Yeah. That's, it's not listen, you. That was a pretty good explanation, though. That was really interesting. That the way that the layers yeah. all work, and yep. it supports your theory that you've been telling me off camera about the Earth actually being flat and not round. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's, yeah, it's I was kind in of an airplane and I saw it. Yeah, it's flat. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it prob- probably wouldn't actually. Probably the other way around because well, you wouldn't you wouldn't have the curvature, <laughs> so you wouldn't get as many layers of Listen, uh, of different that's air. Witchcraft. No, no, sounds... I know. I, I, I didn't I say that the Earth is round because of like physics or some bullshit. <laughs> it, it's it's definitely round, not. It's round because witches prefer round things. They do. It's true. They just it's do. It's not as pointy. It doesn't Pecs. hurt. You know. And so they made it round. You know, it's not because of fucking science. The witches no. who made the earth made it round because they like round objects. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. And Frank Dukes is completely legit. Okay. Correct. Is his Everything name Frank is or Fred? Yeah. Frank oh, no, Fred Dukes. Meyer. Frank Dukes. <laughs> All right. So if you want Fred to see Dukes. one of these. <laughs> we don't even... Fred Dukes we is actually shit. Frank Dukes' brother. <laughs> yeah. We don't know anything. <laughs> okay. You got the, the two Dukeses, man. You want the yeah. Deuce Dukeses. One started a, Duke, an upscale Deuce Walmart. Dukes. The other one, the Deuce fucking, Dukes. <laughs> yeah, Deuce Deuce Dukes, Dukes. The, fly, the fucking flying Dukesman. That's no mirage. The oh! flying Dukesman. That goes around saving kids from other flying pirate ships. Perfect. Yep. We did it. Yeah. Bing. There it is. Um, I'm texting Pixar right now. We got your next <laughs> fucking. Oh, you got their number? Tell them I that do. I, I do, hated actually. Finding Nemo. I won't tell them that. Tell them. Why would you say that? I think Dory's oh. miscast, and I think the whole thing's annoying. So, oh my god! Well, while we're I, I getting like how, angry, I like how that movie is like one of the most failed films of all time. Like from like like from an it execution is? standpoint, yeah. Because this is why oh. the premise of the movie is: <laughs> Hey, kid, you want the fish to be home, uh huh, and to not be a little fucker and ruin his life. <laughs> And the response was massive increase of kids being little fuckers and taking clownfish away from their families. So like oh, the the, yeah. the the input and output wow. is like so desperate. Like it's, it has to be like the most failed attempt at telling a story of all time. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And if I got lost in the ocean with Ellen DeGeneres. You ain't never would, coming out. I'm never. Yeah. I would just keep. I would just. I'd bury myself under the, the dirt <laughs> I, of I'd the ocean. I'd be finding the trench. Down to Mariana. I'd go all the I'd, way to Mariana. I'd Marianne's fly death. into a shark's mouth directly. <laughs> You're like, kill me. Okay. Please just end all it. All right. So, do you want to see one of these floating ships? Yes. Yeah. Here's what you got to do go to the places where they appear most, which is like the Strait of Messina in Italy or like the North Pole or the South Pole. And you got to have. gotta go there. What the fuck? Well, why not? Let's, okay. We'll, we'll all go together. I live we'll go by together. the ocean. Oh, you're right. So do I. But- so doesn't it doesn't happen here in California, apparently. It does. doesn't happen on the West Coast. Oh, it does. It does. Okay, where? Yeah. West Coast it's, is best coast. So It is. Yes. Santa Cruz. Happens in Santa Cruz. 
Uh, as of course, all it weird happens in Santa do. Cruz. Yeah, <laughs> everything something, does. Of course, man. something in the water. People who visit, they're yeah. like, "What is with this city?" And I'm like, "I can't even begin to explain." I don't. Classic Santa Cruz. It is the weirdest what place. What happened on is, Earth. is Santa Cruz got like a big high on like ska music in like 1998, and then hasn't found a way to like recapture that since. And so everybody's nope. just like looking for the next thing, but they're there's no the next, next thing. Ska. You know, because like. Like yeah. ska music tastes like your first bite of like a mozzarella cheese stick, you know. Yes, and you're never you never getting yes, that high does. back. So I used to want to be in a ska band because I play the saxophone. I know. I didn't know like you haven't told me that, but I knew that, you know. Yeah. You, you just felt it. It was just like Well, you're from Santa Cruz. I'm not from Santa Cruz. <laughs> you are there. That's all that matters. <laughs> What's happening? I'm not in Santa Cruz. <laughs> I thought you said you were in Santa Cruz. <laughs> no, no, no. The Fata Morgana appears in Santa Cruz. Okay, who's in Santa Cruz? Somebody people that sleep, people that sleep Cut on this the beach. part. It's not real. <laughs> Some fucking this is a brain brain worms. Frank Doom story. <laughs> brain worms that are going around. RFK. Uh, I'm having severe brain vote, worms. Vote for right me. Now. A worm literally ate <laughs> yeah. some of my brain. It makes me want to vote for him. <laughs> He's like, well, you know. <laughs> Here's if you want to see a Fata Morgana, it has to be a clear day. You got to be on the mm-hmm. Strait of Messina or some other place like that. Uh, no clouds, like just completely flat nothing in the way of the horizon you got to be looking at it face on and it has to be like a winter day winter days go better because then the water is cold but the air is sure. sorry spring Ooh. days not winter spring is better because the air is warm but the water is still cold from winter and it has to be an object on the horizon so a lot of these shipping container ships you can look out there and they actually do look like modern day cities because they have those like stacked shipping containers yeah. that look like buildings and they, and end they up have lots re- of people in them escaping their uh like slave places pirates that make them yeah. work on all the amazon mm-hmm. stuff yeah, Frank Dukes is there. Yeah. And Fred Meyer. Okay, uh, I'm stuck in a loop. So other ones that are like kind of wild is that 20,000 people in New York in 19, early 1900s witnessed one on Lake Ontario that looked like a giant city made of churches, which really was just like a bunch of ships with like this, the masts, but it, it mm-hmm. stoked the imagination of all these people as like this like magical land beyond the sky. I mean, they knew what it was, but it was like this awesome. I would love to see one. UFOs? There's lots of UFOs that are that can be explained through this, uh. um, especially ones near the beach because they look like they're hovering and they change shape so much that they can look kind of like anything. Like you're looking sure. at a cloud okay, yeah. and you're like, that kind of looks like this. You can and, kind and of. And humans are particularly bad at knowing um, size, shape, and space of objects Very. in the air, especially for them in the distance. So, yeah, uh, that is one of my weaknesses. I can't do it. If yeah. someone asks well, me how far away something is. No way. Most people can't. Even like pilots think they can, but they can't that well because nope. humans just actually aren't good at it. Like you can no. do it with instrumentation, but without that, you're you know you're not right. good at it. And I guess the, an, an easy way to see it is using telescopes or binoculars, or telescope or a or binoculars. Multiple. You have to put two telescopes up to your eyes, and then you look yeah. out into the horizon. Just like this, point them in different directions. I'm going to say one more thing about this. Yes, please do. I was, I'm, I'm all ears. There's a place called Sanikov Land, and there was this explorer back in like. Early 1800s from Russia called, mm-hmm. called Yakov, Yakov Sanikov, which is yeah, kind of a yeah. dope name. My man. Yeah. My yeah. man Yakov. And he and his guys were like, whoa, that's an island. Let's put it on the map. And they named it Sanikov Island because. Yeah. Uh, that's and that's it the was, way it works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it remained on maps for like a hundred years and everyone kept trying to find it and they couldn't. And they're like, this isn't even, doesn't even exist. <laughs> it's a made up <laughs> island. There was this entire, I went down a, I went down a path. A pathway, a, a tabit hole. Is that what Alyssa calls them? Tabit holes. Tabit hole. That's sure. good. Go uh, TM. TM. Trademark. I went down a tabit hole of this expedition that they went looking for this island later on, like 75 years later, and they never came back. They were... oh. So <laughs> there was an entire like- um... So they found it and it was too good to leave. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. this sounds like an old story of some sort. Well, these this this group of people from, I want to say England, but- I don't, I don't know. It's always the English. Uh, oh, they're trying to find an island to take it over. Let's just assume it's the Brits. <laughs> it's like, there's an unclaimed island where they. I are. mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, the historical nerd guy here. Don't, don't assume it's just the Brits. I mean, the Spanish the are like the number one at this. The Dutch did it. I mean, like, come well, on. Well, you're talking they to an it. historical nerd thing, right? Yeah. Thing, person. Yeah. You know, it was uh, Spanish, English, Dutch. They were the biggest offenders of mm-hmm. taking what's not theirs. France did it too. Oh yeah, France did it too. But for some reason, we—I feel like they got a like, they came through that without as much like. Uh, Americans mostly focus on American atrocities and don't learn yeah. other countries' atrocities. So. We don't learn our own atrocities. Well, yeah, that's true. You, you learn a few of the good ones, you know, the the biggest hits. 
Yeah. 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 The b- biggest hits, like, yeah. Yep. I don't want to name them because they're not fun. <laughs> they're not fun. They're horrible. Yeah. They're we bad. live on a country built on blood. Okay. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's all of them. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Okay. So the oh, mysterious I'm... island. <laughs> Miles, let's start a podcast where we talk about atrocities. <laughs> Top 10 atrocities. <laughs> Number one. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> It's the History Channel All show of now. this that has yeah. happened in the- <laughs> this podcast. Okay. Uh, anyway, don't, this- don't cancel me. I agree that atrocities are bad. I just yeah, we all agree. Yeah. No one listens wow. to this. Don't worry. Pro okay, atrocities. <laughs> Miles Greb. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so then I got on a list of um, lost islands, and I'm going to leave it at that because I think I might go deeper into these these lost islands. Oh, there's some good ones. Mm. No, there's some very good ones. Yeah. And that's Fata Morgana. So look at pictures. We'll put some up. It's yeah, those cool. are great. Thank you for your science and work. Oh, you're not going to give us the list of lost islands. I see. I thought no, you were no, gonna I'm saving give that. Give us an overview. On this. Tune in okay. next no. time. No, I just wanted to make this short, short and sweet, and I'll uh, maybe I'll touch on some of these islands later. Definitely, I opened like 25 tabs. So yeah, that's how it works. Yep. Excellent. Uh, well, yeah, thank I have, you for I have your nine tab. tabs open right now. See. I'm Good job. Hygienic. Hygienic. <laughs> Clean. You got to protect that uh, random access memory. I don't care about my random access memory. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> That's why I get a lot of RAM when I buy a computer. All right. What do you got for us? Okay. Uh, mine, mine is a little bit different from your guys'. Uh, the title of the article is called <laughs> McGruff the Crime Dog Has Been in Prison for a Decade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know his number. <laughs> we can call him. Sing it with out. me. Scruff, Scruff McGruff, McGruff, Chicago, Chicago Illinois, Illinois 60652. <laughs> I have to say, we got that boy's digits. I'm fucking going to see what he's doing. Scruff, call him. McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Do you not remember this, how, Hannah? How do I not remember this? I know Did who he is. Did you never see? You saw Scruff. Okay. So there was a. Yeah. Okay. So for the audience who does not know. If you watched TV in the 80s and 90s, these PSAs <laughs> played just on repeat, yeah. nonstop, over and over and over again. And that song, specifically that ending, is like forever etched into most people's memories. Um, because he sounds sort of like Clint Eastwood singing at the end of Gran Torino <laughs> when you go back and listen to it. And it was really, really catchy. So these PSAs featured McGruff the Crime Dog whose affiliation in retrospect was a bit unclear, I think, because he's dressed like a detective in an old noir movie, but his title was The Crime Dog, which by definition makes him a criminal. (laughs) I think think it's more like he's dog in crime, you know? Oh, yeah. He should, like, in that case, he should have been the crime like, dogger. Got a nose for it, you know. <laughs> he should be the crime dogger in that case, but not the we, crime dog. Just means look, you are a criminal. Ain't the fucking grammar dog, you know. <laughs> he don't have time for titles and shit. There's people yeah. out there doing wrong, and he's trying to fix it. Rest in peace, grammar dog. Ingrates, you know. Everyone wants better policing. <laughs> he's out there doing a good job. He's the one guy. The I've one never guy seen kind. him. I've never seen him shoot anybody. No, no, That's no, true. no, no of uh, the racism. None of it. No. None of it is involved. I hope. No. Please don't tell me. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scrubs no Scrubs questionable Facebook comments. <laughs> Listen, he's got opinions about atrocities as well, but we're not going to get yeah, into does, any of that. Does he have a, uh, <laughs> one of those shirts with the skull on it and the American flag with the blue line? Yeah. Oh. He's wearing a thin blue line shirt all the time. <laughs> anyway, despite years of working in the field and PTSD from having seen some of the worst of humanity, McGruff has this dipshit nephew, Scruff, who parades <laughs> yes. around without a care in the world, convinced I he's going to live Scruff. forever. Yeah, Scruff yeah. McGruff. Yeah. This kid's an idiot. He goes down dark alleyways despite his friend's misgivings. He goes to his other friend Bobo's house under the auspices of playing that cool new video game only to have Bobo bust out his dad's gun and be like, you want to hold it? Oh, I remember that shit. I remember that. Remember that? Yeah. Yes. I was like, man, Absolutely. I'm never going to play games with that kid. Exactly. I don't ever want to go to the gun house. And he punders out loud. He's like, what will I do? Only to have McGruff chime in and simply say, you'll see before moving on to the next thing. Which I what? think is 
<laughs> it's so stupid. In so that scary. moment, he needs guidance from McGruff, but he's just like, yeah. no, don't worry. And the reason for that is, is because uh, the entire point of the PSA is that he's trying to get kids to send away for free activity comic book <laughs> that explains what you're supposed to do in various questionable situations regarding bullying, guns, drugs, hence the song bumper that happens at the end um, and I'll get back to that in a second but which is crazy to me because you're watching these PSAs and if you're a kid you're like what am I supposed to do with, like when someone sees a gun and they're like that's not time for now you got to write us first you got to write us a letter to this address which is going to take weeks for us to get it and then after that and we're going to send you another book yeah your friend might shoot you with his dad's gun it, it's terrible he's not going to shoot he's going to wait for you to write a letter you know he's respectful that's true you're He's gonna like, interrupt oh, you someone writing with... a letter. <laughs> you want to hold my dad's gun? Hold on, let like, me get back to you in four to six weeks after I send out this letter. McGrath, and he's I like, "Cool, I'll just wait here." <laughs> I mean, why well, I went to school, kids are very respectful of quill and paper. You know, letter writing was mm, a hot yeah. activity, like mm -hmm. way cooler than pogs or yo-yos. <laughs> the yo-yos are so hot in fifth grade. Oh, they, they, they banned yeah. them. Oh shit! My they banned yo-yos. They banned yo-yos. They banned See, pogs. They banned uh, tamagotchis. My school sucked. I, I live because... close to Chico, California, which is where they have like the oh, yeah. the championships. So we we were like training. You know, we like we With fucking Frank Dukes. Well, no, he was not allowed to. <laughs> he compete was also too. a pogo champ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, nah, I was in Silicon so, Valley, baby. Silicucked. Yeah. Go on. Fucking gross. Silicucked. Coming 2025. McGruff <laughs> was created by Sherry Nemers and Ray uh, Kravosky, Kravoshi, under the direction of Jack Keel, executive vice president and creative director of Dance Fitzgerald Sample. That's the name of the um, company. Dancer Fitzgerald Sample had been commissioned by the Ad Council. Do you guys remember that logo at the end of those commercials? The Ad Council? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Which was a nonprofit who was first approached by the Department of Justice in 1977 to create a public campaign to engage the public in reducing crime. And the legend goes that Keel was stuck in a Kansas City airport at 3 a.m. and started to think about Smokey Bear. Smokey, you guys remember Smokey Bear, of course. Oh, yeah. Smokey Bear Forest is Fires. real. Yeah, he's That's I true. saw him. He's a real guy. Where'd you see him? In Utah? He told me. No, he's real. Know. Smokey the Bear is real. He told me yeah. not to tell anybody. No, I'm not oh, kidding. That's true. Like he actually was a real bear. <laughs> he's like, he really? also fights. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Like he's oh, actually. Oh, go ahead. Joking. Explain. I didn't know this. What is? Yeah, what's yeah the Smokey deal with the Smokey? Bear was a real bear that they found, and like he was a cub that survived wearing the wildfire. Blue jeans and a hat. Oh. <laughs> Look, I don't know what he's wearing at the time. Obviously, <laughs> he has lost to history. I'm just telling you, that Smokey the Bear was an actual real bear that survived a wildfire, and then like they raised the bear, and he was like an ambassador for like, don't burn down the fucking what? forest kids. Which, Whoa. by the way, you shouldn't do, because my house burnt down because of a forest fire. So I'm, I'm very, pro, very pro of Smokey the Bear. So he's a real guy, actually. That's cool. Wow. I didn't know that. So he's like an yeah. orphan of, of, uh, of a tragedy. Interesting. Wow. Uh, as you said, Smokey was a trusted authority on preventing forest fires, and Keel thought uh, if he could create a Smokey for their mission, he would have a hit on his hands. So he had a couple of different options that he was like working hit, through. Like, yeah, I was thinking he's going to murder gonna somebody. Kill. Murder, yes, an assassin on their hands. Uh, no, he would have a he would have a popular character. He considered an elephant who could stamp out crime, or a <laughs> rabbit who was hopping mad about illegal activity, but eventually a, settled a on rabbit. a dog who could take a bite at a crime. See, I like the elephant because he would never forget and never forgive. Right? No, like, like if you commit a crime, this elephant's coming. It's right. over. And if it yeah. was a rabbit, it would just like one noise would send it like running the other way. So that's a terrible idea. Yeah. Uh, I think at 3 a.m. in the morning when he's in the Kansas City airport, he decided he's like, you know what? A dog is a good idea. People like dogs. Airport um, thoughts. Airport thoughts. Exactly. So Sherry Nemers and Ray uh, Kavisky, who I said earlier, took this idea and they ran with it. And they described their pitch of McGruff as, quote, someone who was tired. He had seen the world and he had epitomized all the detectives we have seen from Raymond Chandler to Dashiell Hammett and even Columbo. Whoa. All right. All right. Give, give me the pitch. Who's in your character? Well, he's tired. He's yeah. super. Just no fucking energy. Kids he's will love weary. him. He's weary. So yeah. He's over it. You know that scene at the end of Chinatown? When yeah. some, he's basically Chinatown, he's stuck Jake. in that moment for his whole fucking life. That, that's the character. <laughs> that's McGruff. He just, he can't. That, that's him. He probably has a drinking problem. Who knows? Mm -hmm. He chain smokes. 
Speaking of uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I feel like he's just Eddie. What a good um, fucking movie. Oh, unbelievable. It's so good. Have you seen it? I, You've seen I, it, I yes. Thought yeah. I was thinking of that movie when I was looking at my Bloodsport list, and I was like, we could just never fucking make never. that movie today. We would just ruin it, and yeah. that movie's just so damn good. And even when you watch it and you're older, you're like, I wonder if it still is good. It gets better. It's, it's so even good. better. It's, like it's even better. It's like a technical masterpiece. Oh, like it's just amazing. The fact that they were able to pull it off blows my mind. Who Framed Roger That's Rabbit fan club podcast. Yeah, right yep. here. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Richard Williams, I believe, was the animator that was the animating supervisor. Oh, really? Yeah. There's that term they call, uh, just a little bit of animation history, they call it bump the lamp. Have you guys ever heard of this? Mm-hmm. No. So the thing is, is, like Roger bump, or he bumps the lamp in one scene and the lamp starts flying around and then the shadows are going crazy and that became like this shorthand for how he would talk to Zemeckis and be like, yeah, bump the lamp is like the crazy shit you can do when you're actually animating something that's uh, live action right. mixed with 2D. And he's like, because most animators, this is his words, not mine. He says like most animators are lazy and they don't want to like do all that crap oh. so hard. <laughs> And he's like, but we would bump the lamp and just try and come up with like the most complicated thing imaginable. So Zemeckis was like really good at just being like, I'm going to fly the camera around everywhere and do all this crazy stuff. And then Williams was like, great, we'll have the animators figure it out. Anyway, that's a story for another day. Those poor animators are like, I want to go home. They're like, ah. But- <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are no homes. There's only Roger Rabbit. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's our uh, But they gave us a masterpiece. So uh what was i saying uh yeah and they based a lot of his uh design on colombo specifically at the time peter falk um his design was adjusted accordingly and now upon his big reveal in the world to the world in november 1979 the character was introduced at a press conference in new york city with the slogan take a bite out of crime but he did not have a name he was nameless and in July 1980, a nationwide contest to name the dog was concluded. I think <laughs> Man, they were putting di- it on the back of cereal boxes and stuff. Different country if they yeah. came up with McGruff. Because I don't know if you know about <laughs> right. the Mountain Dew naming. Oh, yeah. Thing. No, what's the Mountain Dew naming one? Uh, I remember so Bodie had, McBoatface they, they with some boat. The green apple Mountain Dew flavor was up, right? And they let the internet vote on it. Uh, <laughs> num- number three, the uh, I think this, the runner-up was Gushing Granny. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god and and uh, and then uh, i'm saying this on the show it's a joke nobody come at me the the number one name was hitler was right mountain dew <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so that was that's what won the contest so then they're like okay we don't fuck. deserve it we don't deserve any of it yeah. wow okay yeah, wow. So don't it's like democracy. those potato chips too the potato yeah. chips they got to name that were like anyway go on I don't remember the potato chips. I'm saying I don't either. I only oh, remember okay. half of that story. So Fair enough. <laughs> the least funny half. <laughs> the, le- the least funny yeah. half. Exactly. Now, now I gotta go. It's like that thing anyway, in, so- in screenwriting where people like write and they cut to the punchline and everybody laughing. You cut yeah. to the setup and just cut, <laughs> cut the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> so in July 1980, he was finally deemed McGruff oh. the crime dog, and the runner-up. Guess what it was. What? Just take a guess about what Fred. his alternate name. <laughs> Fred Dukes. <laughs> Fred Meyer. It was Sherlock Holmes. Ah, oh, boo. no. That is no, the dumbest thing you've ever heard. This motherfucker Scruff McGruff. End of story. End of story. Well, Scruff, Sherlock? Scruff, <laughs> Scruff was the nephew. He's McGruff the crime dog. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. But, you know, they're all friends. Yeah. They're all friends. Yeah. So the, the winning name was submitted by Officer John Isbell of the New Orleans Police Department, Whoa. which I don't like that a cop is the one that actually a got cab, to name him. you know? Yeah. Uh, even the good anyway. boy. Even McGruff. A oh, cab. McGruff. <laughs> and that conclu- includes McGruff. Damn. I said what I uh, said. This extremist positions. <laughs> <laughs> This being the Reagan era, everyone in the government loved the idea that drugs were the root of all problems and not bad governing and defunding social programs and all that stuff. I put a thing in chat here. There's a picture of him shaking hands with Ronald Reagan. Oh, I was going to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. So that might, you know, sour you on. Scruff McGruff. Um, that, yes, I was actually going to get, I was going to see, I actually have a funny sorry, picture of it story. otherwise. Oh. No, no, it's okay. This is how we know McGruff is a sellout. Wow. Conversely, I think this picture was really funny. We're jumping ahead a little bit, but <laughs> it's a picture of him standing behind Dukakis and Dukakis <clears throat> looks extremely irritated with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just how Dukakis to... was, you know. I am. Uh, is that a cat? cat? Brutus, get out of here. I want to see it. No, he's Cat. evil. 
Oh, so okay. I have an evil one too. Yeah. So there it is. McGruff, <laughs> do you see it finally? Dukakis, Dukakis is not hates having that it. dog. Yeah. He hates him. Could have been a different world if he had been president. And anyway, McGruff was a big hit in regards to brand recognition, and he got more than a hundred million dollars of ad time. And space had been donated by mid-1981, because don't forget, it's a PSA, so they didn't have to actually pay for any of this. They're just like, here you go, here's free ad time. So they're like, great, let's do this. So it made McGruff one of the most popular ad council campaigns ever. And as a result of the commercials, over 1 million free booklets had been distributed. Another 250,000 were purchased from the government printing office. And the Army printed 300,000 booklets for their own programs as well. The uh, army? By the end of yeah, by the end of 1981, over 50% of Americans had at least one McGruff advertise had seen at least one McGruff advertisement. With one third reporting they had seen the advertisements more than 10 times. Interesting that these booklets, so they're kind of comics, right? So if that puts yeah. you into comic book world, uh, that makes it comparable to Spawn number one in terms of how many copies were distributed oh. and kind of owned by Damn. people. Getting Todd McFarlane numbers. Which is wow. kind of crazy to me because these books are, you know, they're not super available online, but, you know, it's a huge, hugely successful. I don't know if you call it successful because it doesn't sell anything, but like they're very, very popular. A lot of people had them um, and a lot of them are not necessarily available online, but I could find one that was archived Ooh. properly and it's called McGruff Surprise Party from 1989 and in it. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> yeah. menacing. It is. I think I have some of these books. You have seen it? I think I there have a... some of these books. Oh, are you oh, serious? Cool. I think I like have them still, yeah. Oh my God, you got to bust them out and let us know. Um, so McGruff's surprise party. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's in like, it. shh. Yep, it's, it's, it's not meant to be this way, but that's how you read it. In it, McGruff invites a bunch of underage children to his home for a party, <laughs> which seems questionable. And he tells yeah. them, we're going to throw a surprise party, but he won't tell them who it's for. The kids go out and prep with some getting balloons, others popping an, an exorbitant amount of popcorn and they're all just chilling and getting ready. <laughs> and the kids go out and they're doing all this stuff. And as they're prepping, they share stories of how they were approached to drink or worse by child drug dealers and my personal <laughs> favorite older siblings. That's oh. the one that to me, which is like <laughs> such a product of the era, because if there's one thing an older sibling wants to do, it's number one, share with you. Right. <laughs> and number two, especially things that will knowingly get them into trouble. And be associated with you at all. I'm like, just like, I... who wrote this? They mentioned PCP. They have like a six-year-old kid mentioning PCP in this car. Whoa, yeah. dope. That kid's cool. Uh, <laughs> it's cool, cool kid. <laughs> it's cool to do yeah. PCP when you're six. Yeah, all I right. think so. All right. So there's the cover of this is... He's in a room with a bunch of children and he's just going like doing the shushing. Shush. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's really scary looking. Ah. This man in a trench coat. Who knows what he's wearing underneath there, by the way. But It's a dog. He has fur on his body. He's got a dot. Mm. He's probably selling Rolexes at the very least that are illegal. But anyway, by the end of the comic, they all reconvene back at the house and getting ready. And then surprise. The party is for you, the dear reader. Oh, that's so nice. very sweet. There better be PCP at this six-year-old party. I I am not happy. (laughs) That's the little tote bag that you get to take home afterwards. Good. Little tiny Uh, sample of PCP. Exactly. So um, I looked it up because I was curious and like, who produced these books? Because I was like, I wonder who these... There's Somebody was an illustrator for this comic book. Mm -hmm. Somebody was a writer. We've all worked gigs that we're not like super proud of or like the coolest thing, but we still are professionals and somebody did it. I couldn't find who the writer and illustrator was specifically for this one, but it shows that it was produced by a company called Custom Comic Services in Pennsylvania, whose Mm -hmm. website was last updated in 2017. Mm. Oh, Okay. Um, their website looks like it's from like the year 2000. It's very, very old school. And it looks like the people who were producing these comics in the 80s were still running the business. Nice. Um, I don't really know. I just sort of wanted to give a shout out to those people. Again, Cool. they're part of our lineage. They have Reddit a comic that's at least as famous as Spawn number one. And they deserve to be in history the same way that Todd McFarlane is. The people who made these, <laughs> who made these right. McGruff comics. Twist, it was Todd McFarland. Todd yeah. McFarland! <laughs> <laughs> he would have had a different outfit for yeah. sure if Todd yeah, McFarland. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted yeah. to make a comic book about McGruff's surprise party and how there was a child molester coming, and, and that's my best Todd McFarland. No, it's, oh, not it's not bad. It's not bad. 
And he goes, so he talks. He always does this. He always yeah. snaps in every interview. Got an yeah. idea, Tom and McFarlane. I knew. Damn, he's all the kids need PCP. Boom. I knew how to talk <laughs> to Reagan. Anyway, uh, <laughs> back to the original tab. John why Morales. Didn't, why didn't he arrest uh, Reagan for Iran Contra if he's so busy taking a bite out of yeah. crime? I appreciate the shout out to uh, what he did in Iran. That's that's very kind of you. Yeah, I don't know why. I think because he was in on it, much like yeah. the rest. He just Fuck. let Ollie North be the fall guy. He, he was, was like, there. whatever. Yeah. yeah. See, Smokey the Bear there. would fucking never. 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 Writes no. out of history every time. Meanwhile, he's there with Noriega talking to the army, <laughs> being like, I think you guys should play Welcome to the Jungle to try and drive him out. <laughs> Traitor. Anyway, back to the tab. John Morales, the actor who voiced McGruff the Crime Dog in the 90s. So originally it was voiced by, um, what's his name? The guy who uh, came up with him. I forget his last name again. Oh, uh, really? Keel. Originally it was Keel, but then, you know, Keel got busy or whatever. So they had to hire one of these actors. I mean, one of the he's actors famous was, now, you know. He's, he's, he's making that McGruff money. John Morales uh, has now been in jail for over a decade. Because in 2011, police discovered 1,000 marijuana plants, 27 <laughs> weapons, including a oh, grenade no. launcher, and oh, 9,000 no. rounds of ammunition ammunition in his residence. God damn it. God the voice damn. of McGruff was hoarding the guns. And a grenade launcher. <laughs> and a grenade. Man. I'm saying this is why you need a man like Frank Dukes to deal with crime. You can't trust <laughs> yeah. a fucking canine, you know? Yeah. A dog? No. Do Hitler had dogs, and they loved him. Yeah, that's actually true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't trust a dog. The actor was sentenced to 16 years behind bars after pleading guilty <laughs> to the charges. Morales <laughs> insisted during the sentencing hearing that he was nonviolent, but U.S. District Judge Vanessa Gilmore said, quote, everything I read about you makes you seem like a scary person. End well, quote. <laughs> the judge said that? The judge the said that during a sentencing. Judges can say anything, I found out. Yeah, sometimes they can even not do their job and mm -hmm. then just delay cases and break the rules. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yeah. that's so mm -hmm. weird. True uh, events. Current events. So I'm going to end with a couple of fun facts about McGruff the dog that are on the website. First fact is there are 4,000 active McGruffs, parentheses, number of costumes in use. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't no. <laughs> phrase that differently, but that's that what they wrote. That is a weird way to say it. Oh, it gets weirder. McGruff has a classy Corvette, a monster truck in Arizona, and a wiener wagon in Florida. <laughs> I'm not even going to comment on what that is. You, you know <laughs> what a wiener, wiener wagon is? In Florida? I don't know what a wiener wagon is. No. Isn't it the wiener mobile? I assume. Why does McGruff have it? Why is McGruff inviting kids over to his house for a surprise party and driving around in a wiener wagon? That's what Every I want to know. Everything Undercover. don't gotta be about that. It's not like that he's a priest. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like he's a priest. <laughs> but oh, most he, of he all, but most of all, he likes to ride in patrol cars assisting law enforcement. <laughs> what? So, According to the website. If I ever I, get arrested, it better be by a guy in a suit, in a McGruff suit. <laughs> There's 4,000 of them. One of them can be the ones who arrest you. McGruff's so, favorite crime fighting techniques are to teach children specific tips to be safe at home and school and to help law enforcement officers do their jobs better. Narc. Yep. Or Lastly, yeah, but... McGruff is a quote unquote ham, so he loves doing public service announcements for television and radio or posing for print or <laughs> billboard advertising. So and that's all I got to say. That's like about a tired, that. a tired, attention seeking dog to tell me ham. not to touch that gun. Yeah. I was I was Googling McGruff the Crime Dog and the, okay. the one of these things that popped up was McGruff the Crime Dog Canon Death. Ew. <laughs> so, what? Death? So, oh, there's yeah. like someone wrote a story about how he died. Uh, and apparently he has stats and we have like we know how fast <laughs> he can run. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's considered a street level superhero. <laughs> uh much like yeah. Daredevil. <laughs> yeah. yeah Whoa. True. Apparently wow. his weakness is he can't do anything while time has stopped. While so, time has stopped? What does I mean, that mean? Not, neither can yeah, I. He can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently there's a death battle episode with him. Okay. He showed up on an episode of Family Guy randomly, I read He can about. run so fast. How fast does it say? 45 miles an hour. Dear yeah, Lord. So it, <laughs> it looks like Imagine under... 
<laughs> on the death battles, he's fought coat? like a, a a Koopa Troopa, a Kuma <laughs> from Street Fighter, Boba Fett, uh, Zangief, uh, a Raptor from uh, fucking Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park, and Bomberman. Yeah. So, oh, also Bomberman, Wiley. That's a throwback. Wiley from Wiley Coyote, um, Mega Man, not from the Coyote oh, variety. I see, I see. Wow. Doctor Wiley. So there's some people that he's fought, apparently. This is all canon. Yeah. This is beautiful. Good, good. R imagine, like, trying to run away from him, and he just immediately, 45 miles 45 an hour, 45 miles an hour running after tackles you. tackles you to the ground, just right, straight, straight into the dirt. I can't believe he was he was a reefer head and betrayed America. Uh-huh. When was he a the, reefer head? Oh, you're talking voice, about the actor, the not the actual. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I thought I yeah. thought this was more of the canon that you were reading from. No, it's not in the canon. I don't. Yeah, believe. I thought so too. I was like, interesting. Oh, it's just shame that American heroes fail because they are addicted <laughs> to the weed stuff, just yeah. like Michael Phelps let us all down. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I funny enough, I did think about this too. Um, between this and Dare, uh, they oh. raised a generation of kids who grew up to essentially try to decriminalize most drugs. Mm -hmm. So. The thing that gives me solace is that it completely backfired with a lot of stuff. Completely. You know what's funny? I never did drugs, and maybe it worked on me. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because it's rough. And, I, well, I, mean, I got, you got a free. Books. I got a free T-shirt, and it was a black T-shirt. Looked nice. good in it. You know, yeah. looked pretty cool, black and red. And you yeah. know, and I've been straight edge ever since. So maybe the propaganda wow. got to me. I maybe. don't want to lock it people up for me. weed, though. So no. I don't know. Dare definitely Gross scared guys. me. Scared you straight, scared straight or whatever. No, scared yeah, I also didn't know thing. where to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Utah, where, where? Go into the mountains and hope you find your older stash. sibling, Hannah. Apparently, yeah. clearly, I'm your older the sibling was always doing drugs, doing drugs. Uh, anyway, that's my tab. Um, awesome. That concludes my section of Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, six zero six five two. Shout out to John Morales with his grenade launcher. Um, <laughs> And that that's takes as, that's as right as an American to have a grenade. Yeah. That is as right exactly. as an American to have a last like I a checked, we had a second amendment weapon. Yeah, that, that could take out a group of people. You know, I can only assume that he used that Scruff McGruff money to purchase that. Um, yeah, for sure, and, and <laughs> drugs. So they technically they laundered money through this man to purchase drugs. Anyway, okay. Uh, so Incredible. now it's the time of the show where we have to close our tabs. Yeah, um, Miles, what do you think would be a fun sound effects? Sound effect for us to play as we close it. A grenade I, launcher. I could play you the song I wrote. <gasps> oh, that's right. You wrote us a song. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hold on. I have it in a tab. Like you pre-recorded it? No, I I don't know if oh, it you will wrote sound it down good. So you can actually. We'll microphone. try it. And if it doesn't, I got then it we'll embarrassed cut it. to play it. I'm very excited. Oh my gosh. Let's see if it sounds good. Sometimes my mic like messes up with the audio. If I'm on key, hold on. I'm embarrassed to sing this song. I won't look. Do you just, I, won't I look. totally understand. Yeah, do you want us to look away? Should we turn off the cameras? No, I don't care. If you see something to click on, you don't have to read it now. You don't have to use your favorites. Use a tab. 500 tabs, 500 tabs, 500 tabs, 500 more. <laughs> yes! Miles! Are you kidding? Browser one and browser two, browser three and browser four. I'm 500 tabs away from my home page. 500 tabs, 500 tabs, 500 tabs, 500 more. I am 500 tabs away from my home page. Yes! Yeah. That's the song. Oh, Speaking of the other movie, Dude, I constantly talk to Hannah about. That was about. amazing. That was a truly amazing. I was just dicking around last night, and yeah, I don't know if that records well. But well, we yeah. have a oh, new it's, intro. It's excellent. <laughs> that's uh, that that that's a variation on um, 500 miles, which is also an Inside Lewin Davis, Hannah, which is what I always yeah. talk oh, to you is? about. So 
Uh, Miles has yeah. hit the two movies that I talk to you about all the time. Uh-huh. By a mir- that's amazing that you hit both of them in the same episode. I just know what's going on. Discussing like, it. Apparently, <laughs> I just you got know a what's going on. Yeah. Or we just meet people who are just like us at every convention. That's true. Yeah. I think that's we became a- friends because I started quoting wizard people. That is exactly. Like, yeah. And I was able to quote it right back. And you've never met anybody who can... Anyway, watch Wizard People, dear reader. The lament of roast beefy o weefy. <laughs> roast beefy o weefy. I tried showing Kaveh, and he was like, "I don't." Like, no. ah. I don't even people remember. Don't get when it. did you try showing me? When, I don't even remember this. It was like late at night. I was staying at your house, and I was like, "You like Harry Potter?" And he was like, "Absolutely not." Like, Absolutely oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try, and it did not work. <laughs> I, uh, as I said to you, I think at that point, I'm like, "I missed. Harry- I was too old for Harry Potter yeah, when it came you, out." I was like, "I was like, I don't get it." Just missed. I mean, it's, it. I yeah. get it. I get it. It's fine. It just was like it wasn't part of my identity the way that it was for so many people. Yeah. Um, I think it's it, okay. That is such it's a fine. Slip- thing to say yeah right <laughs> just, just, just kidding i don't know uh, that that was a fantastic song i don't want to close tabs I, over it because it's a good I song i love that i love it that I like love made that my song week too. oh wow that's so nice of you to say we well, will have to do song. whenever we get to a level where we have live shows we're gonna have to have miles come on tour with us and then we'll sing that live Right. We can harmonize can we with have him. someone edit our live shows live? Because I don't trust myself to, to be able to <laughs> not say a lot of things. That's an incredible strain on, on Alyssa's <laughs> Alyssa. wrists to be doing it. <laughs> she like, be, like silences the microphones when she feels I might be going too far by saying No yeah. ability to fight when time is stopped. You know, so you can't edit oh, without exactly. sacrifice. It all comes around together, you know. Um, well, we're going to well, close our tabs because this is still part of our tradition. Hannah, what do you have an idea for for closing them? Should it be a dog running at 45 launcher. miles an hour? Oh, <laughs> no, grenade a launcher. grenade launcher. Does it sound any different than other things? Yeah, it goes whoosh, and then because oh, it's a big we, tube. It goes, right. We could do like okay, a, a cartoonish one where it's like. Oh, that works too. Oh. Yeah. Miles, do you have your tabs ready? Yeah, where I, I open one more tab about Smokey the Bear's true story. I'll close it. I opened sad, but... Fred Meyer. I opened. <laughs> okay. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll close count my down. tab. You can count uh, us down. Three, two, one. Four. We'll close them. Three, no. <laughs> two, <laughs> one. <laughs> close it. Okay. We Moving it. on. We are oh. on to listener emails. Uh, Hannah, I believe you're up first for us. Yeah, I'll go emails. first. All right, so this is from Lauren from Denver, Colorado, and it's titled Cow Waterbeds. I've just started listening to the podcast because a friend recommended it to me. Hell yeah. So asking, yeah, so asking to share the podcast with your friends is working, for sure at least once. Yes. yes. My tab, thank you. My, <laughs> thank you, Lauren. My tab from Apartment Therapy about waterbeds and, now people, and how people don't buy them anymore, but they still have a very niche market. I always keep the tab open for when the question of whatever happened to waterbeds comes up. <laughs> Weirdly, it's come up more often than you'd think. At its peak in the 1980s, one of every five mattresses sold were waterbeds. But they really? quickly began, yeah, they began to disappear in the 90s when people realized they're not inconsiderate flaws. Hard to fill and drain, cumbersome to move, and worst of all, they can leak. I remember back in the day, landlords writing in apartment listings, no peds, no pets, no water beds. I remember that. Mm. There is, however, a market in the U.S. for water pet water beds. Dairy cows. <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> it's a little different from the water beds of old, being mostly a water filled pad on the ground for cows to lie on. But it helps reduce sores and joint pain for cows while in the milking mm. parlor. I don't know what a milking parlor is. That's what I like to call my office. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. That sounded way grosser than I meant it to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're keeping that in. Even though I really, even though I don't really drink dairy milk anymore, I do like the idea of cows having a comfy place to rest. So kudos to farmers for buying these weird relics of a bygone bed era. Love the podcast, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. I want to see a cow on a waterbed. I'm sure that's, uh, it seems like we're going to get a bunch of drawings or memes about that in the Discord pretty soon. And I think you need to put um, a sign on above your computer that says the milk parlor. The milk parlor? <laughs> don't do I too don't drink milk, which <laughs> is, makes it funny. I, d- drink, I drink milk because I'm a good uh, American boy. <laughs> yeah, you are. Good old <laughs> good old milk boy. Uh, okay, email <laughs> milk, number two. Milk boy oh, hold Miles. on, hold on. Hold on. No, well, we got we to gotta change some words around here. <laughs> 
I write you guys a song and you fucking do this. Oh, no. Oh. I did I did earlier say I'm going to kill you. I didn't mean that. It just comes out of my mouth. <laughs> That's no, how we show affection. It's true. So. No, I, that is how we like show Frank affection. Dukes. Yeah, I'm filing a police uh, report. You fi- yeah, with Scruff be McGruff. <laughs> yeah, I know who to call. <laughs> okay, email number two is from Sophie from New Mexico. Oh, cool. Dear, uh, dear Kava and Hannah. Hi, Sophie. Dear Kava and Hannah, love the pod. I followed Kava over from Musical Splaining, and I have no Thank regrets. You. Thank you for following. So uh, many I people. Truly appreciate I love it. it. It's uh, deeply embarrassing. I'm sorry to continue to disappoint you, but thank you for um, <laughs> going on to the next show. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Hannah's etymology tabs and the not safe for work animal facts sent in by another listener. I believe that was Paul. Paul. Um, shout out to Paul. Yeah. Did you talk about Reminded- hyena penises? No. No. Uh-oh. Okay. We talked about pig <laughs> orgasms, I believe. Is not, what it was. Yeah. Hi- hyena penises. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I assumed Whoa! that that had to be a top one. Please I'm describe what you're away. seeing. It's um, all female spotted hyenas have functional penises. The females it, also have penises? Mm-hmm. They use it to pee, signal, and... Oh, okay. Well, go look it up. <laughs> <laughs> just don't, go look it don't. up. Don't. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> How am I supposed to read the rest of this listener email not knowing what that third thing was? Well, she said not say for us animal facts. That's the first thing that popped in my head. I was like, oh, yeah, fucking hyena penis. Great story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They um, use it to dominate everybody. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not yeah. safe for work. Animal facts sent in by Paul reminded me of a mystery <laughs> that I open uh, a new tab on every couple of months: the lioness upon the cheese grater. Huh? <laughs> the lioness upon the cheese grater is an act mentioned on an ancient Greek brothel menu, where is hey. yeah. the most expensive item offered. In Aristophanes' play Lysistrata, do you guys know this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she a got group of... second in Shakespeare in high school. Of <laughs> course she knows it. I don't know. It's Greek brothel. I didn't necessarily think that was. She knows about Greek brothel. Uh, She's not racist against the Greeks like somebody. Like you. <laughs> I'm not racist against any Greeks. I keep all the jokes Greek running and workers. going. You know? Thank that's you. What, that's what we love most. We really have to be careful. And now I'm like, worried the Greeks are going to be mad at me. They should. Greeks is wonderful. Uh, thanks, for on. Me on, thanks for inviting me on. Thanks for inviting me on your we show. Love to have you. <laughs> a group of women who go on love a sex strike to force their husbands to end a war pledge to not quote adopt the lioness on the cheese grater position. What exactly the lioness upon the cheese grater was has been lost to history. No. So scholars have been arguing about it, about, about arguing what it means for hundreds of years. Apparently. Amazing. Ancient cheese graters often had crouched lions carved on them for decoration because cheese graters were prized and expensive. So a crouching position based on the cheese grater lions was the main theory (laughs) up through the 19th century. Some more recent scholars theorized that the lion signifies strength and the cheese grater references a cheese grating like motion like this. Uh, Oh, (laughs) thanks for the demonstration. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Others believe that the lioness upon the oh, cheese yeah. grater was an intentionally ridiculous sounding joke made up by uh, Aristophanes like an ancient urban dictionary term. I like the oh. idea that we're all being trolled through time by the ancient Greeks. So this is my favorite theory. If I had a time machine, I would immediately learn ancient Greek and go bother mm-hmm. people about the lioness upon the cheese grater. And then there's a mm-hmm. link to the tab included. Sending good vibes, Sophie from New Mexico. That, I'm, pretty, um, I'm pretty partial to the joke um, hypothesis. We talk about this a lot on my yeah. podcast because we talk about ancient mm-hmm. stuff. There, A lot of times people assume kind of like a sanctimoniousness to older no. people, but they yeah. were just a but stupid we're bunch same. of idiot fuckers like we are. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Like, it's like, like art, art history. Being in an art history mm-hmm. class, they're like, why did they use this color? I'm like, as an artist, I don't know. I don't think they cared. One of the oldest, one of the oldest written things we have, like the second oldest written thing we have, is a joke about women farting. That's right. You know, like the oldest like the, joke that we have. I don't know this woman yeah, farting. Yeah. oldest joke. What is it? Can you tell? It's us? just one of the, oldest the woman written farts ones. a lot. That's like all yeah. it is. It's just that's you just know, the joke. There's no setup. They're not. No, they it's were. Like, it's very primitive. You know, they're learning. They they found out farts are funny. They, they just figured, out, figured it out. I see. There's no <laughs> you know, structure. There's no, you know. Or like, you know, the very first image ever of Jesus is Jesus with a big donkey head, a Jesus follower with a big donkey head on his head. Whoa. Because you know? they're like, he's an ass. You know, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a political you know, cartoon. 
Yeah, it's, the thing. it's just a bunch of stupid shit. And everyone's like, oh, the people in the past are like, oh, we're from the past. We're so serious. We have swords. But they're just a bunch of goobers. <laughs> they're you the know? same as us. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. as us. All right. Uh, well, that one was wonderful. If you also have an email that you'd like to have us uh, read on the show, please email us at 500opentabs at gmail. Dot com. That's 500500. Please let us know what you learned from it, like a fun fact. Let us know where you're from. And most importantly, include the link. And that about takes us to the end of the show. Um, we would like to give you a special shout out. Miles, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. To, number one, write us a song, which yeah. in and of itself would have been more than enough, but also uh, to do yeah. the episode. It's wonderful. Yeah. People can find me on Twitter. At Gold Rush Comic, or I'm the only Miles Greb in the world, so I'm very easy to find. I'm the only Ann Hill. Hell yeah. Actually, so, there's one I, write, more, but... I write several good comic series. You can buy those from me on my website, which is after the Gold Rush dot space. Um, they got awesome. words and pictures in them. They're fucking fantastic. Words and, and uh, pictures. That's what I'm saying. High technology. Same technology that uh, McGruff used, actually, to save children's lives. Shut I use to, to this day. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I got my podcast. Uh, I co-host with uh, Trey the Explainer of, of YouTube, and we talk about weird stuff in history. But we're like um, you know materialist, scientific, skeptic people, so we don't know bullshit. But we talk about the weird stuff in history, right? Um, and then we watch an episode of Monster Quest at the end of each episode, like a treat. Mm-hmm. And uh, awesome. we talk about what they go through. And we've had like had the producer of Monster Quest on the show before, and him and oh, I are nice. friends. So you know we get like the perspective of uh, the believers as well oh, that's so cool that, that's that's what we do that's what i do and uh i like you guys thanks for having me <laughs> on the show we like you too or do you I have like any you more too, um do you have anything coming up that you want to plug any uh, books that are about to come out or something that people should keep out an eye out for conventions so my, my full graphic novel of puck the artist which is about a world where um artists can draw things into existence but color was stolen long ago but nobody knows that Ooh, um, that cool. story will be out uh, like nationally, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, and everything at like the end of the year. Um, awesome, like two hundred page big one. And sometime in the oh, summer, wow. um, I'll be doing a special edition hardcover re-release of Clovis because I've completely sold out of it. That's my paleontology comic set in North America twelve thousand years ago. I was going to um, say that wow. the clo- is it about the Clovis people of yeah, like, it's Fred, about Fresno fic- area. Uh, it's about a fictional um, mother of a I real life tournaments there. Um, <laughs> person anzic one who was uh, yeah. a dig site we found and so it's hit the mother yeah. of that child it's oh her story gosh. yeah um I, I so need that, to read that, that yeah that comic is completely sold out unfortunately but we're going to be doing a special edition reprint of it this summer so cool wonderful yeah that's me stuff Miles, I do. You're, you're so funny you're so fun to have well, thank you for coming thanks my second grade teacher did not agree she's like you talk neither too much did mine. <laughs> you know? yeah neither did mine i got in trouble all the time yeah you're in good I got, company what was it we had like a, a like a color system and i'd always mm. have like the red card <laughs> instead yeah, of a well. green one she's Look like you're now. always making jokes and talking yeah. too much i'm like that's because all you guys jokes suck i'm trying to lift that's up the room you know podcasts we're all working have here. not been invented yet we're yeah. trying to uh <laughs> almost make it getting thing. close yeah, yeah. um well, of course oh you can uh, follow Hannah us Oh, you yeah. follow us oh, at so 500 sure. Open Tabs on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm Hannah Hillam at Hannah Hillam on everything. And I have a book coming out. So just go to my Instagram and there's a link to the pre sale. I'll be at San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in Spokane and Comic Con, but it will, it's happening that weekend. So, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I will also be in San Diego. But June 5th, the weekend that this uh, is released, oh, uh, yeah. for those of you who are listening to the show, um, I'm actually going to be in San Francisco for an event that I. At the time of recording, I don't have the exact details, but it's going to be June 8th, which is this Saturday. Uh, it's going to be somewhere in the city. Um, it's going to be a book event for my former co-host, Lindsay Ellis's new book. Um, she very graciously asked me to be uh, in conversation with her that night. So um, I read her first look. book. It's good. Oh, yeah. Did you read the it's second about... one? Not yet. The second one's her... got my name in it. <laughs> oh, shit. What? One of the first characters about is named Kava. aliens in the Ops. Yeah. It's pretty That's cool. Awesome. Exactly. I like so the it. third one's coming out. So for she's doing a, a tour for it. And then uh, I'm going to be uh, doing a conversation with her in San Francisco on June 8th. Um, if the details, which I'm giving right now are not clear, go ahead and look on my uh, Instagram, which is at perma friends. I'll be posting about it. We'll probably post it in the discord for anybody who's in the area that wants to come, um, which by the way, you should join our discord. If you haven't done so they're in the show notes and I'll probably post something on Twitter about it. Cause I 
need to every once in a while, but I more or less don't like care about Twitter anymore. We uh, should do a live show while you're up here. Maybe we'll do a live show this live week. Live stream, while, live stream. Live stream. Yeah, not a live show. <laughs> all all three people that listen to this podcast will be like, hey, how's it going? Hey. It's just our friends. Yes, TBD on the details of that, but definitely June 8th in San Francisco. Come see me. I'd love to see your beautiful faces, and I'm sure that you guys uh, can probably want to see Lindsay. Come on my show if you want. Okay. We would love to. But you do have oh to gosh. watch an episode of Monster Quest. That's fine. I thought you were going to say we have to write a song, but I don't think I'm going to be able no. to write one that's as good as yours. No, but, um, nothing. Yeah. That's all right. Um, anyway, but thank yeah. you guys for listening. Thank you again to Miles. Uh, we will see you guys at the next episode and keep it Josie, everybody. Oh, yeah. Keep Goodbye, it Josie. everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>